There's nothing better than farm or garden fresh for taste, for nutritional value, and the colors are a feast for the eyes too. In our community, we're fortunate to have the Nashville Food Project seeing to it that this bounty gets served up to folks who might otherwise go hungry. And where better to learn about the Nashville Food Project than right here where the magic begins, in the vegetable garden. We're with Christina Bentrup, who works with the Nashville Food Project. And tell me a little bit about what your organization, what the, what the Nashville Food Project does and means. We're a small nonprofit that grows, cooks, and shares nourishing food with two goals, to alleviate hunger in Nashville mm -hmm. and to cultivate community while doing so. Well, we have two production gardens okay. and we balance the crop rotation amongst those gardens. So in this garden this summer, we're growing a lot of our peppers, our summer squash and cucumbers. You're looking for things that A, will produce bountiful crops, I would imagine. And, and really, I mean, any fresh vegetable is going to be healthy, obviously, but peppers, the things that you named in particular, really do have a lot of nutritional value. That's exactly right. As we all know, good quality food is really expensive in our country. And we right. think that everyone deserves to eat fresh, high quality, organic, local produce. And since that's the most expensive thing, we've, we found that growing it ourselves and processing it in our kitchens is the most affordable way to get that good quality food to people who need it. Well, you mentioned organic. Yes. And I, I think that is such an important thing to people this day and age. But I, I just want to say, you know, a lot of people I think have a tough time gardening truly organically because mm -hmm. they're, we're always, battling some sort of pest or disease or something like that. And I have to say, your plants here are absolutely beautiful. So any tips or tricks of the trade that you might be able to offer people? You know, how do you grow such beautiful plants? Well, we all know there's a fair amount of luck in it. But <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> <laughs> um, absolutely. We really focus on having healthy soil and healthy plants first. Mm -hmm. And we know that by creating this culture of health, just like with humans, um, the plants can be more resistant to pests and disease. Right. So preventative care is our message. That means that we start plants in our greenhouses, in our custom potting soil mix with mm -hmm. lots of the, our own compost that we make. Right. We, when we bring them into the field to transplant them, we do all the work by hand. Mm -hmm. So we don't use tillers that, while on a large scale, can be helpful in saving labor. They often pulverize the soil and destroy that soil structure that's so important right. for healthy root systems. Luckily, we have a lot of volunteers that can support that system uh -huh. for us. So we build healthy soils through hand turning and then have really healthy plants from day one of putting right. the seed in the ground. Not only using your compost for your potting mixes in your greenhouse where you mm -hmm. start things early, but putting that back in the soil as well here, doing green manure kind of things, or when you're, when you're weeding and that sort of stuff, does that go right back into the, into the soil? Uh, that is exactly right. So we make a lot of our own compost. Um, all the scraps that come out of our meals making process in our kitchens get turned into compost that go back into our gardens. Um, we do follow a pretty strict crop rotation where we try to uh, change families of crops where they are each year, as well as just follow a really simple rotation of leaf, root, fruit. Uh -huh. So we try to plant uh, after a fruiting crop like a pepper, we would plant a leafy crop like kale or a root crop like a turnip to keep changing what's be what nutrients are being taken out of the soil. And then we also really try to let the soil rest every once in a while mm -hmm. with a cover crop so that we can plant crops that are actually enriching the soil rather than depleting it. And right. so we make sure, although we're very production focused, to keep up that production, sometimes it means letting part of your land rest. rest. Well, I have to say, these are some of the most beautiful peppers I have seen anywhere. Uh, can you tell me what variety they are? Yes, uh, we've had good luck growing these Corno de Toro peppers. They're an Italian variety that's good for roasting. Mm -hmm. uh, we use them in stir fries and all kinds of roast vegetable dishes. They're incredibly disease resistant and seem to be very productive in our climate. Yes, and, and you might recognize these. They, they almost look like a chili pepper, but this particular one is sweet. That's right. So it's and not a hot ripen. pepper. Ripens really nice red or yellow sometimes, uh, depending on, the, uh, on which Corno de Toro you have. But That's exactly right. Yeah. 
we want to have cucumbers to harvest all summer long. Right. So we do multiple succession plantings mm -hmm. of cucumbers. So in one of our other gardens, we have cucumbers that are this tall that we're actively harvesting right now. Right. We have a younger set of cucumbers that staggered about three weeks younger, mm -hmm. and we'll start to harvest those as the second crop finishes. And then this is our third crop, so it's about six weeks behind our first crop, uh -huh. and we'll be able to harvest it starting, oh, in about a month or so. Tell me about the row covers. Yeah, uh, this is a special kind of row cover called a uh, protect net, mm -hmm. and it's particularly used to keep those insects off that you were just saying right. really attack cucumbers. We have terrible cucumber beetle mm -hmm. in Nashville. Right. So we keep this insect netting covering the plants just on these hoops mm -hmm. um, until they start to flower. And then it's very important that we uncover the plants so that the pollinators can come in and do their work. Right, because on a cucumber and on squash, you have a male flower and a female flower. And it's the female flower that bears the fruit. So if there's no pollination, then there are no cucumbers or, or squash. And speaking of squash, again, like those peppers, I have not seen squash this beautiful anywhere in a very long time, but there is a bountiful crop of beautiful squash growing in this garden and there's a huge patch here and another enormous patch down a little ways and again a beautiful job of growing squash here. Well again with the squash you wouldn't know it now but for the first month they were out in the field they were protected with some light netting. Uh -huh. For a home gardener it could be any type of mesh that covered just a few plants and it really helps the young plants get really healthy and strong before the pests come in. Right. And then when they are healthy and strong, they're able to resist for quite a bit longer. Mm -hmm. You're doing kind of a unique thing here in growing actually some edible sunflowers. Yeah, the edible sunflowers are bred particularly for having plumper, longer lasting seeds. This is our first year growing them and we discovered that the birds like them as much as we do. Mm -hmm. So we discovered that by simply taping a paper bag that we've cut open over the head and letting that seed fully ripen is a better way for us to get it and, and the birds to not. <laughs> right, right. You do have to protect them from the birds. There's also a wide variety of herbs here at the garden, like parsley and anise hyssop and a variety of other things. In addition to some cool season vegetables like asparagus, which would have been harvested earlier in the spring and now is in its summer growth, and kale, which is a very important nutritional plant and easy to grow during the cooler seasons of the, of the year. That's exactly right. We've been harvesting this kale um, since the end of March, probably. We started it in our greenhouse and then planted it in March. Mm -hmm. We're able to harvest baby leaves right away. Sure. It is getting to that hot part of summer where the kale is starting to look a little tired, a little sad, right. insects are moving in. So we'll be doing our final couple of harvests uh, mm -hmm. in the next few weeks and then pull out the whole plant, add a lot of compost, let the soil rest for a minute, and then we'll plant it with carrots for fall. Okay, once the kale is harvested, I'm assuming when these plants are removed, like with most of the rest of your garden, these go to the compost? That's right, the, the roots will go to the compost, mm -hmm. although uh, some of the more diseased leaves and pickings will actually send over to our chickens, gotcha. who will be happy to pick through them. Yes, chickens do love kale. You have kind of a little unique fish operation here. What, what about the goldfish? That's right. Well, we do try to be incredibly water conscious. So we collect rainwater all over the garden uh, off of every roof structure. We also collect the water that leaks from our hoses, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, in any open barrel that we have that's collecting rainwater, we have goldfish. They keep the open water from breeding mosquitoes, which is a real problem here, you may have noticed. <laughs> and they're able to just stay in these open containers year round with no problem. Our oldest goldfish are four years old and we've never fed them once. And they've been in these little half 55 gallon barrels and 55 ga gallon barrels the whole time. That's right. They live entirely off of the mosquito larvae they eat in the summer, the leaves that fall in from the sky, and in the winter they go dormant. Christina, thank you so much for having us out to see the garden here today and for telling us about the Nashville Food Project. If people want to find out more about you guys. How do they do that? Um, yeah, we'd love people to visit our website at the NashvilleFoodProject.com and when they do that they'll find all kinds of ways to get involved but especially to volunteer. 
This garden happens every day of the year because we have volunteers come out and support our work. Well, thank you so much. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.